All right, to tell us more on this, we're joined by uh, Dr. Neil Littleton, who is the co-founder and board member of Igazi Foundation. A very good afternoon to you, sir, and thank you uh, for joining us here, Dr. Littleton. It's my pleasure. Thank you. Just as a start, hematology, of course, is a branch um, of, of science dealing with the study of blood and blood-forming uh, tissues. But, of course, there's a lot more to this, Dr. Littleton. Tell us, uh, in layman's terms, really, uh, what uh, this all entails. Okay, well, hematology is a, a branch of medicine, as you um, correctly said, um, it's a new and vibrant part of medicine, and it's also a cutting edge where all the new um, novel agents are coming out, um, really helping people who are suffering from, from these cancers. Uh, if you can, of course, um, get them. They, they are rather expensive and... and not easily always available in South Africa, but, you know, we are trying to make them more available, um, that being the one set. And the other side is, of course, the diagnosing of patients and getting them to treatment centers earlier. Obviously, the earlier you get them to a treatment center, the better the outcome. Mm. Um, the diseases are plagued because they sometimes mimic by other diseases like tuberculosis. We see a lot of disease or hematology diseases with HIV, and as you know, HIV is very, very prevalent in South Africa. Yeah. And unfortunately, even in, in today, we still see patients who are missed um, and come very, very present very, very late, and that's just tragic. And Really, my feeling is that it should not be happening in South Africa in the current time. Yeah. Um, yeah. So what, what kinds of conditions are we talking here? What would uh, uh, be treated by a hematologist? Uh, some of those uh, diseases that, uh, you know, you obviously wish to be detected uh, quite early. What, what diseases are we talking about here? So, hematology, the, the bulk of our work will 70% will be oncology. So, all the malignancies of the bone marrow and the lymphoid tissue. So, here we're looking at your leukemias, acute leukemias, chronic leukemias, uh, lymphomas, which are wide spectrum uh, from your indolent lymphomas. Lymphomas is, um, for those who don't know, is cancer of the glands. Yeah. You know, your lymph glands that sit here and in your um, axillae, which is different from, from, for example, breast cancer, which may spread to the lymph nodes. This is primary cancer of the lymph node. So it is literally a cancer of your immune system. Then um, you get your prior, you get indolent or low-grade lymphomas, and then you also get high-grade lymphomas, which are very, very aggressive. And you can actually watch these glands growing. Um, then you get other more slow-growing cancers like myeloma, which is a very painful disease which chews up the bone and patients really suffer from this one. Mm -hmm. Then you get your acute leukemias, which I think everybody knows because we watch TV and it's always a tearjerker on the TV. But then you also get your chronic um, leukemias and um other bone marrow malignancies, which I'm not going to bore you with. <laughs> and then the 30% the of hematology that's not oncology would be the people who are suffering from anemias or um, low blood, yeah. if I can put it that way, or people who are bleeding, congenitally bleeding like a hemophiliac, or people who are clotting because they've got a genetic disease where they clot too much and they can get strokes at a very young age. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, the big thing is in South Africa, if you are a bleeder and you've not been diagnosed and you are going to the initiation camp, this yeah. is a problem. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's a very yeah. big problem, especially here in the Eastern Cape, where we've made great strides with um, training the NIBI um, to be aware of bleeding disorders. Um, you know, our severe hemophiliacs, they usually present at a young age, so we know who they are, and then we train them so that when they go to the bush, they can take their factor with them. Mm. And, you know, and they can still enjoy, you know, the cultural heritage that is theirs and, and, and not have to miss out on that. So we try to give them the full um, spectrum of life.
And I'm so glad, Dr. Littleton, that uh, you brought this up. You're actually killing two birds with one stone. It's, you know, on the one hand, you know, we're, we're celebrating or whatever the word is, uh, Hematology Month. You know, we're observing Hematology Month. And then also we are, of course, talking about heritage. In fact, we just uh, uh, played a clip uh, just before we spoke to you uh, about, um, you know, people celebrating uh, heritage. Uh, so, you know, you, you tell me uh, the fact that, you know, you, you are able to kind of spot quite early if someone is a bleeder. Um, I mean, what kind of um, sort of, um, how are they received when they're going up to the mountain to have these uh, traditional uh, um, procedures done? Where, of course, we know that we don't have uh, uh, medical doctors there necessarily. Are you finding that uh, those young men that do go up to the mountain, that do present uh, with these sort of uh, bleeding issues, are in fact handled uh, in the adequate way that they, they should be? Or are you finding that, in fact, it's the opposite that is happening? I mean, this is something that we've actually been talking about quite a lot on this uh, particular show. And since you raised it, I'm really quite interested to know how, um, you know, the, the process is then uh, changed uh, to, to, to cater, if I can put it uh, in, in those words, uh, those particular boys who will be uh, going up to the mountains. Right. Now, that, that's a good point that you raise. Um, a lot of it's got to do with education and training, uh, both from the patient, because Ultimately, if you're a hemophiliac, it is your disease. Yeah. You have to take responsibility. Not me, not your parents. It is your disease. So we try to train our patients from a young age to become independent so and knowledgeable of their disease so that they can help themselves, um, so that they can also mix their factor themselves and inject it themselves. And if you can get a patient or a young man to the point where he can do this to, for himself, then he can go into the, the bush and the initiation camp, you know, no problems. Mm. Initially, when we started here, yeah, we trained nurses, um, male nurses, who would go into the camps um, to help the, the patients um, during the, the initiation. Um, then we also did a very big outreach to the NIBI to train them and teach them about this. So your question about how was it received, I feel in the Eastern Cape certainly it was well received. Um, we did a lot of training with, with our hemophiliacs. In the other provinces, um, I'm sorry, I, 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 I'm going to be lying if I tell you how it's going yeah. in those provinces. But yeah. certainly in the Eastern Cape where, where Igazi is, Based, mm. We have really done a lot of groundwork to educate the patient and to educate the whole community about bleeding disorders. And we haven't had any serious um, morbidity or mortalities from, from that since we have taken this proactive yeah. campaign. Oh, fantastic. Thank you so, so much. some good news. Yeah, no, thank you so much for mm. the work uh, that you do. Um, it's uh, quite unfortunate that we are out of time because what I did want to also ask very quickly was, uh, you know, uh, are you planning to, you know, to me it's quite sad that uh, Ikazi Foundation is the only hematology service in, in sub-Saharan Africa and I wonder if there are plans uh, by any other doctors in your field perhaps uh, to expand in other provinces because it certainly is important. Yes, no, we, we are expanding in other provinces. We do outreach in every province. The one province we were going to do outreach is Limpopo in, in May this year, and then, of course, there was a COVID in the lockdown. Yeah. We were also planning to go into other countries, um, sub-Saharan countries, and this is still on the, on, the, on, the, on the board because once lockdown stops, then we will be spreading our wings to the rest of South Africa, Southern Africa, and Africa as a whole. All right. Dr. Littleton, a pleasure speaking to you, and thank you for giving us uh, that uh, information. Thank you so much, Doctor. Okay. Cheerio. Bye. All right. That's uh, Dr. Littleton, uh, Neil uh, Littleton, who is the head of uh, Ikazi Foundation. Of course, September being uh, Hematology Month. All right. We'll just take a look at what the weather